Alex from Strava here. So we're going to give you an update on our Mark 7R. So just to, as a refresher, this car is uh, still on the IS38 Turbo. It's the last kind of iterative uh, step of the modification process that it's still uh, on this OEM turbocharger. But we took the opportunity to add pretty much every bolt on uh, and to really test it, stress test it on E85 uh, and so on so that we, we get the results uh, that we want and we understand exactly what it'll do and how to optimize the setup before we jump to a larger turbocharger. So the last two mods that were added uh, to this dyno session versus the last is that we added a larger front mount intercooler. It's an OEM replacement. It's made by CTS and we also added their intake. So let's talk about these two mods and what they do. The intake is, is quite a large tube. It's a three and a half inch tube there and uh, that will lower the pre-turbo pressure ratio. So you actually lower the compressor pressure ratio to achieve the same boost pressure because you're lowering the, uh, you're lowering the, the pre-turbo pressure by not having such a large pressure drop across a smaller tube, which uh, the OEM uh, intake has. Uh, also the intercooler, so it, it's much more massive than OEM and uh, it really shines in situations where you don't have the ideal airflow across the front of the car. So when it's sitting here on a dyno, we've got these fans in front of it, uh, cooling it down. Uh, the, the OEM intercooler is even less efficient uh, simply because it doesn't have the mass to absorb all the, all the thermal energy. So we saw on these fifth gear dyno pulls uh, as much as a fifth degree temperature difference between doing the pull with the OEM intercooler and, and doing the pull with this uh, upgraded intercooler. So the fuel that, that we ran in the car to be consistent was E50. Uh, we, we tried to run this fuel without uh, running MPI and uh, just to maximize the setup, the HPFP could not, could not keep up. And although we maximized the injection window uh, on the vehicle, this, the, the fuel pressure was dropping below 1500 PSI and it's not really a setup that we recommend for GTIs or for, uh, for Golf Rs. You, if you want to run ethanol and you want to keep your uh, fuel system OEM, then we recommend that you stick to up to E30. Beyond that, might as well jump to MPI. On this car, we don't have the HPFP upgrade. And the reason for that is, uh, is simply because it, it didn't make much sense since the MPI has the benefits of uh, really unlimited upgradability in terms of fuel uh, availability, cleaner valves, and, and it just bypassed the need to add uh, the high pressure fuel pump. The high pressure fuel pump, if you do choose to just get that, you might be able to get away with something like E50 on an IS38, uh, but, but really long term, if you want to go even further with the car, uh, just save yourself the hassle and get MPI. It also has a really nice benefit of adding a low side pressure sensor so you can really see what your low side system is doing, if it is starting to drop pressure, if it needs to be upgraded, and if you do upgrade it, that allows you to very accurately target your fuel pressures so that you don't overwhelm the, uh, the OEM controller for the low side in tank pump. So now onto the results here. Uh, so here are the power curves. Now the uh, solid line is the power curve that we achieved with these last two upgrades, uh, the intercooler and the intake. And uh, we achieved a peak on our Mustang dyno of 420 foot-pounds of torque and uh, 389, uh, almost 390 horsepower to the wheels. This is as, as far as this particular vehicle and, and this setup will, will really go. Uh, running any more boost uh, on it will simply result in more heat and the power doesn't go up. Comparatively to what we had last time, uh, we gained about 15 horsepower. And you can see that those gains are, are across the board. So you can expect that with the intake and with the intercooler, you're going to gain about 15 horsepower with the added benefit of having that, that cooler charge temp. And if you run pump gas and charge air temps are the result for your knock, you can lower some of that knock with the addition of the intercooler and you, you see some further gains. On E50, knock is not really a concern, even with hot charge air temps. 
the, the efficiency of the entire system does drop, uh, but you don't see such a, su such a change from, from knock. So we expect that on pump gas, you might even see slightly larger deltas, maybe up to 20 horsepower to the wheels uh, from upgrading these, uh, these two parts. So hopefully that uh, shows you guys what, uh, what we've been up to and, uh, and what the car's been up to. And uh, the next stop for this one is going to be a turbocharger upgrade. So see you then.